Good news, it is question and answer time. I love answering questions from you fine people. If you have a question you want me to answer on any subject, you can email me uh, on the email below, or you can leave it in the comments, but much more likely to get answered if you email me. I may not answer it, but uh, it's worth a try. And I can give a bad advice on a wide variety of subjects. Oh, you might have noticed there's a big hole in my ceiling too. There's a good story behind that. I will tell that in a future video. Anyway, on with the questions. First question comes from Frosty B. He writes, Dearest Nick, I'm thinking about getting a goat for my backyard. I have not asked my wife yet. Should I just go ahead? I think definitely. <laughs> I have also also wanted a goat for my backyard. And when I get the opportunity to get one, you bet I'll be getting it. Next. Nick, why are people from New Zealand so gay? Ed Ryan, Queensland, Australia. I am not surprised to get this question from an Australian. <laughs> you see, I'm not sure that every New Zealander is gay. I think it's just because we're happy people with an accent. People assume we're gay when in fact we have the normal levels of gayness in our country. <laughs> that said, <laughs> I once accidentally found myself on a gay cruise, so <laughs> I'm not sure that I can talk. Also, New Zealand was one of the first countries in the world to allow gay marriage, so thumbs up New Zealand. Next question. Dear Nick, I love your channel and I find you mildly amusing. Ah. Uh, question. Where did you get your gorillas? I want one to make driving my Civic Hybrid more fun. Claire B, Sunnyvale, California. Claire, did you know that I once lived in Sunnyvale, California? Very nice part of the world. What she is talking about are these guys, William and Albert. Um, and I don't know where you can get one these days. I actually got my gorillas more than 20 years ago. They have traveled the world with me for 20 years and they have been my constant companions. I actually originally got William here uh, when I lived in Hong Kong. I used to work for HSBC Bank and they stationed me in Hong Kong for a while. And uh, one lunch hour I found William at a uh, English bookstore and I purchased him and I took him back to work. And the funny thing was, uh, in Hong Kong, uh, you take one of the one of the methods of transport is the MTR, which is the the underground railway system there. And at rush hour, it is just a mass of humanity. So, I I went to the MTR station with William on my hip, and we were heading home. And William, <laughs> William, and I got stuffed into the carriage. And there's so many people on the MTR. They push people into the carriages, and you can see people giving me the eye because. I'm a little taller than your average person in Hong Kong and with William uh, here, people were sort of giving me the eye like going, hmm, you and your stupid gorilla are taking up the space of like four or five people. So they weren't impressed. But yeah, gorilla, uh, William has been with me that long and then Albert over there, uh, I got him a couple years later. I realized that William was lonely without a friend so I had my friends all scouring the earth for another William and one day, I got a call from my friend Stefan who said, Nick, there's another William down at the warehouse in Newmarket. This is in New Zealand. So I jumped in my car and I drove down there and I uh, looked where he said and it wasn't there and then I spotted him. He was getting dragged by his arm, like this, dragged along the floor by this little snotty nosed kid. And so, <laughs> and the kid was obviously looking for his parents to buy the gorilla for him. So I went up to the kid and I went, hey, I need to put that gorilla back and took the gorilla and took Albert off him <laughs> and then quickly purchased him and left. Uh, not my proudest hour stealing a toy from a child, but you know, I feel that I have given Albert a much happier life over the last 20 years than that horrible kid would have. Next question Nick, you have many fans back in the motherland. When are you coming to visit New Zealand next? Jason WRX. Well, Jason, I am coming in, I'm coming in the end of March, so. If you guys want to have a meet up, uh, then leave a comment in this video or maybe email me and I will arrange a short meet up somewhere in the Auckland area, either end of March or early April. Next question comes from Steve H. Steve H writes, what was your worst ever car? Well, uh, I did have a bad experience with the 911 about a year ago, but that wasn't my worst car. Actually, this was my worst car. This little green Alfa Romeo 33 from 1988. Back when I was uh, young and broke, 
I purchased this as a second-hand car and it didn't go well. <laughs> well, <laughs> but there were times when I, I really liked the look of it. I love the color, I love green cars, so those are both good things. And I think I sold that car for more than I purchased it for, so I don't know that it was that bad, but here's where the problem lay. lay. Had a few electrical gremlins, as every Alfa Romeo has. In fact, I think everybody should have to own an Alfa Romeo at some stage in their life, just so that they know just how fantastic every other model of car in the world is in comparison to an Alfa. Uh, but yes, my Alfa, um, the headlights and the window wipers only worked very periodically. <laughs> uh, and certainly not when it was raining or at night. Uh, so that was a problem. And also, uh, it didn't like being hot. That is, it didn't like being driven in the sun or being parked in the sun. Whenever I parked it in the sun and it got hot, the locks would malfunction and it would run the battery dead. So, I generally didn't like to drive that car either when it was sunny or when it was raining, <laughs> or at night. <laughs> Which limited the amount of time that I could drive it. But when I did drive it, I quite liked it. But yeah, it was certainly, <laughs> and it drunk oil like you wouldn't believe. But other than that, it was a good car. Next, Nick. Oh, this is a more serious one. Nick, if Tui is the love of your life, and she is the love of my life, because uh, I've never got to have children, so Tui is like my child in a way, uh, why don't you harness Tui when driving? Clue B writes. Well, actually, uh, I do. Tui always wears a harness, as you notice, and there's a little, um, I've put a little loop through the ISO link in the back of my car, and she gets clipped into that, and it gives her the ability to run around the back of the seat, but should I crash or roll the car, she's going to be reasonably safe. So, yeah, it's not noticeable in my videos, but she does get clipped in from, uh, not on every journey, but most journeys. Next, from Donald's, or Donald S., uh, he writes, uh, will you do an updated tour of your house for us? Yes, I will. And finally, because not everyone is so positive, I've got this message from Lope in the UK. Lope writes, Nick Murray, please stop. My wife makes me watch your videos in bed. Ah, uh, <laughs> you are a fucking twat. <laughs> so I read this as a statement, but if you look carefully, he's got a bunch of question marks in there. So maybe these are questions. Mind you... Lope doesn't seem to have complete command of the keyboard because the punctuation, random caps, letters, and things all over this, this little message. So, I don't know. Anyway, let's read it as a question. As a question, it should read like this. My wife makes me watch your videos in bed. <laughs> well, Lope, <laughs> I say whatever makes your wife happy should make you happy. Let her watch my videos in bed. <laughs> what harm can it do? And then, finally, you are a fucking twat. <laughs> 